the first principle when it has to do with maintaining relationships are you ready now avoid proverbs chapter 14 and verse 30 avoid competitive jealousy it is a weakness in all men competitive jealousy has nothing to do with being good or bad it's a limitation in men the moment we feel incapacitated based on an obvious reference the temptation is there it is something you must be intentional about you think because you have the holy ghost because you have the word automatically everyone will at one point or the other be tempted on this wise it takes knowledge to immune you are we together the bible says a sound heart is the tree of is the life of the flesh but envy the rottenness of the bones avoid competitive jealousy next scripture very quickly proverbs 27 and verse 4 proverbs 27 and verse 4 the bible says wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous but who is able to stand before envy that means these things are bad oh. anger is not good but relative to to envy anger is like a saint competitive jealousy can i tell you this except you've not been alive for a while you must have come across this as a temptation and the lord is granting you the grace now to build through the immunity of the word you must enter into a covenant that when god brings you to people and associations that are for your destiny you must make up your mind that you will fight with the determination of a warrior to make sure that you run away from competitive jealousy we live in a world of social media we live in a world of statistics where it is easy for people to compare and contrast whether as a man of god whether as a businessman we live in a celebrity world where there is an obsession to show that you are the one doing this or that you have to be very careful thank god for westernization but we must be very careful because it's turning human beings to become something else are we together now there is dignity in your uniqueness you must appreciate who and what god has made out of you you know many times when i speak especially to preachers when they come to meet me you can see this air of sincere intimidation as though apostle you are the ones who are doing this and that and very quickly and lovingly i hush them and i say no do not think so the basis of our judgment is already flawed based on our mindset you will have to be god to judge correctly you would have called Anna the prophet as a failure because all she did was to stay in the temple for more than 60 years who would give her honorarium who would put posters with her face there yet that was the first person that jesus was brought to before he met other people what of simeon the prophet our parameters for measuring success especially in our world today has to be re-edited from the lens of god's word so that we do not put the pressure that begins to fabricate competitive jealousy chances are excellent that when you see a man of god who seems to be charismatic worded as we call seems to have the anointing a crowd some level of influence chances are that based on our human parameter we place those people high we give them we accord them respect and don't get me wrong priesthood has a demand for honor and within the boundary of priesthood the honor that is demanded should be accorded but not to the detriment of those who may seem to be the nobodies because you see i have learned something by scripture and experience when god hides you is proof that you are extremely special to him one of the ways that god shows how special a person or a thing is is that he hides it look at the formation of the human body the parts that are more precious that are really responsible for your being alive and healthy are hidden something can bruise your hand right now and within a few days it can heal back but let that happen to your heart let that happen to your liver let that happen to your lungs
avoid competitive jealousy is is god speaking to us yes envy and jealousy is something that is in us humans generally there is a psychology to it that you see everyone sincerely no matter how right or wrong generally speaking everyone sincerely is attempting to make efforts to make meaning out of their lives whether or not they end up getting it is a different thing but intrinsically i've had the honor and privilege of talking with all kinds of people you can talk with someone who is a drug addict and you look at him and say my, my friend now that you are in this do you love this kind of life you're living he will tell you no he will say what did you aspire to be they will tell you i wanted to be a pilot i wanted to be a this and that so nobody generally would want to just get up and destroy themselves except that you see i teach the school of ministry students that success has an implication on those who are the onlookers because the moment you are commanding results of any sort generally your result kills the excuses of people who have used excuses to justify mediocrity so if they say i was not able to do well they say no that's not true what of so 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 and so under the same condition and that becomes the root of jealousy avoid competitive jealousy what makes you avoid competitive jealousy the knowledge that you are a unique expression of God's glory unique expression of God's glory hmm. are we blessed number two how do you maintain relationships avoid ill or evil speaking avoid ill or evil speaking and that extends to things like backbiting gossip and so on and so forth avoid ill or evil speaking three scriptures very quickly titus chapter 3 and verse 2 let's hurry up titus chapter 3 and verse 2 second principle avoid evil or ill speaking that extends to gossips backbiting titus 3 and verse 2 the bible says to speak evil of no man to be no brawlers but gentle showing all meekness unto all men did you know there are people who literally do not have a conversation if it's not gossip i hope you are not the one as you are talking back at me now i hope you are not just talking about someone else i'm not being sarcastic no discussion if it's not a discussion about this one and that one have you seen what is happening in the presidency have you seen what is happening with men of god in our world and we sit down and analyze for the purpose of demeaning and destruction not building avoid evil speaking god gave you the gift of words and a mind for edification and lifting not for tearing down others are we learning yeah proverbs chapter 6 let's look at 16 to 19 proverbs chapter 6 god is delivering someone right now tonight the bible says these six things that the lord hate now pay attention when the lord tells you he hates something you want to know what it is yea seven are an abomination unto him uh-huh number one a proud look two a lying tongue three hands that shed innocent blood four a heart that devised wicked imaginations five feet that be swift in running to mischief seven what number now six a false witness that speaketh lies and then the bible says he that soweth discord among brethren may god forbid it but the responsibility of leadership and ministry mandates that i teach it that you do not become the person who goes from house to house place to place job to job joining the heads of innocent people together did you hear what this pastor said about you did you hear what this one said about you and the other person says really i've been waiting for this moment no one of the ways we make decisions is to understand the consequences that are the other side of the decisions before we make them 
is god helping us now I, I don't i don't mean listen we are people of love when i teach like this you know that i teach from a standpoint of love but there are times that we need to bring out he said thy rod and thy staff they comfort me are we together maybe some of us came from backgrounds where sincerely that was all you saw and that was all you knew every time people sat together all that they did was to analyze this analyze that now the difference between a meaningful discussion and backbiting or evil speaking is motif you will eventually have to talk about people and talk about things are we together but the difference is motif as leaders you will have to talk about people as family people parents children you will have to discuss people but the difference is motif when your discussion is to create an occasion to tear people down it is called evil speaking we must obtain grace tonight in the name of jesus christ to be mature to rise beyond the grip of these kinds of things and many of us this is how we derive our relevance among our associations we are usually the ones who bring in news have you heard we say what again ah you didn't hear that the other director did this one and that i saw it all one of the blessings of being purposeful is focus that when you are purposeful your purpose occupies you so much you hardly have extra time for frivolities and the things that make for base living are we together now avoid evil speaking you want to maintain relationships that bless you please pay attention to the end of it because there are a few things about men that i have to tell you number three for sake of time are you ready and are you learning koinonia is quiet thank you holy spirit god is walking are you ready the third key to maintaining quality destiny relationships is avoid offense write it down avoid offense what is offense offense is the ease with which you get irritated agitated angry resentful the ease there are some of us who are as volatile as kerosene or petrol anything at all even if jesus is said loud loud is enough to annoy you no you must avoid offense this was what i believe that this was one of the things that brought john the baptist down because john spent his time and had a wonderful track record but when he was now done he himself said i must decrease that jesus would increase excellent john would have finished strong and well except that when he went he was idle and he was no longer shining an offense came in are we together now yeah and he now went to go and discuss another man's business and they jailed him about to kill him and now he sent the man who ordained jesus he said go and tell him are you the messiah or should we expect another that kind of statement when someone looks at you haven't blessed him for years or haven't blessed her for years and say are you really my father or my mother that is not a statement deserving an answer it is proof that offense has come in the way you are behaving are, are you really my father And what do you think your father would do when you ask him that kind of question because <laughs> everybody that asks it receive it <laughs> are you learning can i tell you this by the pre you will betray you and let people see that there is a loophole you are not really there principles of relationships are you ready practice forgiveness write it down practice forgive 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 your wife forgive your husband and you are so uncomfortable coming to church please sit quietly this is why god brought you so that you will be blessed so that you will be lifted the bible says and be ye kind one to another tender-hearted forgiving one another even as god for christ's sake had forgiven you can i tell you this anybody who tells you forgiveness is easy is lying 
anybody who tells you forgiveness is easy has not been offended in this life there are people who are too innocent to for, to, to understand this teaching this night <laughs> nothing has happened in their life they've been shielded by so many people forgiveness is a kind of giving and you see the thing about forgiveness is when you forgive you don't help the one you are forgiving you help yourself it is true bitterness and offense is like piercing yourself with a knife and holding it there bitterness and offense is like drinking poison and expecting another person to die you keep gulping poison and watch you are not dead let me drink another one you are not dead let me drink another one are you learning practice forgiveness luke chapter 6 and verse 37 let's hurry up luke 6 37 kilamando saprakatus yata principles of relationships it says judge not and ye shall not be judged condemn not and ye shall not be condemned forgive and ye shall be forgiven did you know that the people who have it hardest to forgive are the ones who are even in greater need of forgiveness is that true you will never be able to excel having profitable relationships and profitable associations you will never be able to live with anybody any organization any friends at all if you do not practice forgiveness there are families that have siblings that are like tom and jerry cats and dogs it is possible that there are couples here listening and here in koinonia they don't talk to one another when it's time to sleep everybody just goes to their side of the bed just jumps there and everybody is talking to god two of them this one is saying lord i thank you you are my god and he's saying it in a way that pains the other person lord if i depend on men will, will i ever rise thank you for your man. come on listen this is a night when you go back home and swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life it's a little here a little there and then your day will dawn he's at work in you changing everything in obedience listen can i tell you this if you don't practice saying i am sorry you will never be able to excel in this life nations have gone to war today simply because someone was too proud to say i'm sorry i'm sorry does not kill i'm sorry simply means i am better today than i was yesterday are we together there are people who have lost jobs today simply because they could not say i am sorry there are people who have lost profitable relationships business relationships they have been driven from companies today because they could not say i am sorry let me teach you something do not allow your spiritual growth to make for an occasion where you cannot say i'm sorry there are parents that need to say i'm sorry to their children don't be ashamed it does not stop you from being a father or mother there are children who need to say i'm sorry if a man pays your school fees and you come back with a result that is an evil report why should he not quarrel you <laughs> now you get angry and you are not contributing anything i'm sorry has sent nations to go for war there are people today politicians including men of god there are people today who cannot see eyeball to eyeball i am sorry the pride of man is beyond comprehension is someone learning yeah you must as a principle practice forgiveness remember that forgiveness is a kind of giving Apostle, you don't know me, oh. I'm cool. But if anybody annoys me, it's an attack. We've been holding miracle services here. We've asked that people write their prayer request. Why do you think we kneel down and pray on these things? 
See, I'm saying this to you so that I, I trust God that God will help us to live such an excelling life. In truth, I will tell you, it's easier said than done. This is why we need the Holy Spirit. Are we together? Maybe there is a couple that need to go back home tonight and say, look, let's stop this thing. This is one year of this childishness. Let's sit down. The man is waiting for the woman to take the step. I paid your bride price. The woman is waiting for the man to take the step. You are the one who came to ask me. You see, provided this kind of self keeps happening. God in heaven who created us is not ashamed to come and say, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with my loving kindness. Self is a terrible thing. It can recycle seasons of pain again and again and again. There are people who stole from factories and were sent away. And just the unashamedness to go back and say, look, I really am sorry. This is it. I, I take responsibility. There are politicians, respectfully speaking, who have maybe in time past, I hope not presently so, have stolen money from the... And I'm sorry and a sense of responsibility. No, sir. Practice forgiveness. Some of you are even offended with God right now. God, I don't know how you want us to pray again. I've prayed everything. You, you, one day or there, I wish you, you could read some of the text messages people sent me. Since they cannot see God, you who have said you are representing him, they carry that aggression that since he didn't reach the throne room, they bring it and land it on you. They can write something like apostle good evening i'm tired i don't know that, 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 that and this and that and that i'm offended since god hears you talk to him that i'm tired and you know what now imagine that i see that and i call the person i say see don't think because i'm preaching quiet no, no. 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 see our world interprets a life of aggression as masculinity by masculinity i don't just mean it to males when you are cool-headed and you are temperate the world looks at you as a weak person they like people who are aggressive you are a you are you are, you are almost like i don't want to use the expression a freedom fighter because uh, you know and it looks like you you are somebody who fights to the end and people say that's right can i tell you in this kingdom learn from jesus learn from jesus there are times when you are strongest when you look weakest yes sir yes sir and when you are strong and you can bring your strength under control you are strong indeed i know a gentleman many years ago he used to be a builder and then he fights boxing i think they have a license you don't fight outside the ring there's there are some rules that they have and one time you know he had a problem with this bike man and the guy the bike man so he told me was just shouting and said don't think because you are big i can be and, and he looked at him and said oh dear i mean look at this look at this look at this guy <laughs> can i tell you when you have the power to do so much and you can restrain yourself you are you deserve an applause by the whole world indeed for the dexterity and the excellency of your maturity God had the power to call 10,000 angels and yet he was led like a sheep to the slaughter you could imagine Satan and the Roman government saying finally we brought this man to his knees this was the lion of the tribe of Judah the root of David looking so weak had bled and looked very weak let me tell you this fear weak people it was weakness that killed strength on the cross when you see people look weak or act weak towards you it's not that they are incapacitated it's that they are walking based on a higher level of light and intelligence by this some of you need to go to your office tomorrow and stop that petty fight and you know some of these things that is almost rubbishing your pedigree no buy a gift and go and give the person and the woman he said no there must be charm in this gift you will think she will say thank you 
no i don't trust this person go and throw it no problem as for me i've made up my mind that i will live a peaceful life a peaceful life is a goal that you can set and live a peaceful life within the times that you have serving the purposes of the kingdom and i challenge you my proposal to you is that you rise to a higher realm of living there is a superior realm of living above and beyond the grips of this kind of mediocre living there is there is living with excellence and this is the key we're almost done number number five very quickly you must have a high degree degree of tolerance still colossians chapter 3 from 12 to 13. tolerance is similar to forgiveness except that tolerance means you are prepared to have that offense happen again <laughs> you see the difference between forgiveness and tolerance is that forgiveness is creating making accommodation for weakness are we together now a one-time weakness tolerance means you factor in that limitation and live with it because it will happen again and again and again there are people who you need to go past forgiving them they will not change create a system of tolerance are we together i remember many years ago truthfully speaking i was talking to a couple and i think the woman was saying that the man that he is not responsible and yet he prays like a prayer warrior when she's he is shouting to the roof and you know she just said he should reduce his voice he's disturbing her and so on and so forth uh I, I i couldn't say forgive him because that will not end for as long as that man will pray now that you are married to him you are there for life they ask you all these questions you said yes now you are there are we together now and honestly when i saw the man he truly is a prayer warrior when you hear his voice you know that oh no this man is not he doesn't he doesn't come and just mumble tongues he prays he's praying and she felt he was not being as responsible as she should be now how do you tell her forgive him forgive him means you don't expect it to happen again tolerance means it will happen again and again and again an example your security man remember you forgave him january he promised that it will not happen again and he slept on duty he slept on duty and promised that if he sleeps again you should drive him and he slept before you came here so let me advise you and tell you what to do you don't forgive him you tolerate him you see disappointment only comes when there are expectations when there are no expectations there is no disappointment tolerance some of the people that god is going to be using to bless you and lift you let me tell you for a major part of your relationship with them you will feel like killing them and killing yourself you will need to be tolerant until the day the grace that was on them for you comes to fruition do you think that do you know read about elijah historically speaking you know that elijah was a temperous man so don't blame the sons of the prophets i'm sure they had had it enough with him but elisha said no way it was dr mudok who said adaptation is proof of honor you have to learn to adapt the man who god has sent to help you and give you money to start out life he's an angry man don't forgive him tolerate him he will insult you for one year but the day he sends an alert into your account it will be an answer to your prayer of 10 years endure 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 hardship as a faithful soldier don't say i'm angry is he god and then you make that costly mistake and you find out later through your pain that all blessings come from god through men to men are we together i'm saying this because i doubt if there are any persons here who are not connected to some superiors who may not have the 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 most commendable character disposition it's not unusual with leaders whether in ministry whether in corporate life whether in family life you will find reasons to have superiors contemporaries and even subordinates that may not be at their best character wise 
now the responsibility is on you to build that system of tolerance so that you can stay in the harshest of environments and still find your joy until the blessing that that environment should give you comes many of you if you don't learn this you will abort many great seasons in your life because of anger i rather die than come and be washing a car for my uncle am i god and the holy spirit says keep washing but then one day as you wash that car you will not know you are washing your own car and your uncle comes out and says sit down here let me tell you a story in 1945 and by the time he's done telling you that story and he tells you how he lived under a bridge he tells you how he was betrayed and stabbed when a car hit him he now starts telling you his stories then you will be broken and you will say and you are still standing you lost your job you lost all your investments in 1971 you went abroad only for you to be jailed in prison for five years uncle i never knew this about you and now you see the reason why he's suspicious of everybody because he's had over how many decades of pain can i tell you you must be able to tolerate and forbear people just because they have not told you their stories there are people who have been so broken and wounded in relationships the moment they see anybody coming close i'm not even talking of just married relationships any kind they have been scammed by business people someone has come and said i want to marry you and the person just broke their heart and went away and the moment they see someone coming that fear comes give accommodation for people's pain don't just generalize and conclude there are others who have done businesses with people they were scammed cheated are we together and they had nothing to say so when you come to meet them and say there is a business idea and they become so meticulous and they're asking questions who is your father where do you come from where do you worship and you're saying all for this small business uh -uh. be tolerant when people have gone through pain in their life their pain builds a new vista by which they view life are we together there are people seated here right now you are listening to me and you are only here truly because of the message of god the things you've gone through in your life did you know that there are children who have killed their own parents do you know there are parents who have killed their own children terrorists are all across the nation and you will be surprised that some of the people who have been kidnapped the information and the planning came from people who were close sometimes a kiss that is supposed to be a sign of intimacy can be the signal to the enemy and i'm standing here only because you made you made a way that's the testimony of certain people here they set up five ten companies and traveled abroad returned back and found out that people had changed the documents and left them in pain forbear just because people do not tell you their stories does not mean they do not have stories are we together I remember a man of God who wanted to invite me some years ago and he kept asking questions who is this where did he come from and the people who were trying to encourage him to invite me at the point they got fed up and they said what kind of man is this and when the person reached me in anger and said can you imagine wanted to give this man the privilege of having you and he was asking all kinds of senseless questions I said no you may not know who has climbed his pulpit and caused a lot of pain to his membership you may not know who climbed this pulpit and used one hour to create something that took five years to correct allow the man vet me there are some of you here you heard about me many years ago but it took you many years of watching of looking of hearing of verifying your suspicions until you got to a point where you are comfortable you deserve to be left until you find reasons to there are people who have not gone through anything in life or have gone through too many things they don't fear again <laughs> yes sir 
there is a way you go through too much pain you don't fear pain again they bring a business you say no problem i just came out of prison let's do another one if it doesn't work that's it <laughs> and i'm standing here only because you you made a way made a way when our backs were against the wall and it moved to see it was all about you made a way and we're standing here only because you made write it very quickly we have to end number six what is the sixth principle that you need to engage if you want to be blessed by association you want to maintain relationships number six you have to become an active contributor to the growth of that relationship you want to maintain relationships that count you must be an active contributor to the growth of that relationship parasitic relationships are self-centered and dangerous relationships unfortunately our world is full of these kinds of parasitic relationships where the contribution is one-sided you see this with business people you see this with family people you see this with ministers can i challenge you do not be in any relationship where you are only receiving there are people like that if you ever see a text or a call from them they are in need so they will send the text and our ah, calvary greetings in the name of jesus christ you know that that's just a preamble sorry i've come again oh you know that uh, it was by this time last year can i tell you this it's a terrible thing for people to know you as being a self-centered person it's an ugly way to live biology nature teaches us that it is giving and receiving that balances life there are people as i speak to you now they are so self-centered they don't care what happens to anybody they fish relationships like fishermen what can i get what is in it for me and that is the ultimate drive can i tell you this it is heartbreaking when people know that you are in their lives only to receive never to give it is a terrible thing I used to give an example many years ago in Zaria how that I, I hope it doesn't happen again you know there are conductors you know conductors that um, that 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 manage these vehicles that pick people town service and sometimes you see them all in an effort to get the car filled they can come and dance around you and say oh beautiful lady come and enter this car and to them they are looking at hundred naira or 200 naira that's all that they want the car to be filled so that they will move and out of that self-centered nature they will flatter you and say all kinds of nice things while they are talking to you if someone enters that car and is filled they will leave you right there and be on their way going now you are, you are just about to be enjoy the moment it is painful when people know that all that you do to them is for yourself through them not for them that means that you are nice to someone but you've sat down and you've calculated it that in being nice this is what i have to gain so let's be nice let's call him apostle because these signs and wonders we need it after we receive it, you can call him whatever it is that's why it pleases the father so much when we love him and we worship him because of who he is not because of what we get it gives joy to the father when he sees us rolling on the floor blessing his name and worshiping him and he comes to you and says to what end and you say i just love you for who you are imagine that someone be have you seen people who were so nice you began to be afraid because you suspected that this this cannot be for nothing and then you now meet them and say okay so why i mean just what is it and they say no i'm just like that just like that because our world is a selfish world every time people say good afternoon sir they are not saying good afternoon sir what they mean is you better not allow my honor pass like that without your reciprocating it it is terrible and almost irritating 
to live in a self-centered world there has to be someone who is true enough that can love you for who you are stand with you and by you for who you are and let me tell you this there are people like that do not think everybody is a self-centered person who is just trying to use people no there may be many but there are a few that are sincere when they love they love sincerely when they give they give sincerely become an active contributor to any relationship that you are part of in your office don't sit down and say our boss is there whilst we are here they've not increased our salary now december is coming let's watch and see what will happen now what can i do for you my lord i want you to know my heart is your very powerful song what can i do for you my lord i want you to know my i prayed and i told god something and it's still my confession today that i have never sought his face because of tea and bread it's not fame or anointing or power that brought me to ministry i came because i truly loved him and for the rest of my life for as long as i have breath living in me money fame reputation will never be motivations for my serving the lord thank god for the little that you know he's brought all of the tokens that follow priesthood i am grateful and indebted to him but that was never the motivation i am amazed to see the things that drive people into ministry today i am amazed to see the things that drive people into the pursuit of god today there are many people who seek him simply because they said you will not fail when you seek him that's an investment i love him with my life if he tells me to put down this mic today and become a cleaner in this house i stand by the god of heaven and i tell you this you will come back next week and find me cleaning here with the same joy and the same passion that i had because it's an honor to serve his majesty it's a privilege to be counted as one who can be a lifter of his word to the nations you must change your perspective many of you are disappointed today because you are not contribution conscious you are receiving conscious you come to the house of someone and you say this man is a rich man see money all over the table and you are watching senator honorable and in your mind you are saying god punish you sir you are my uncle and we've been suffering like this his car is dirty you never wash it there is no let me tell you this ask blessed people or people of influence they are very very fast to detect people who are selfless you come to the house and in five minutes you are washing the car you are looking for something to do first they will suspect that you are not sincere then they will allow time to prove your sincerity when they find you true they will bring you in and even treat you more than their biological children there are people who are working in certain corporations today not because they merited it by their technical skills they have shown such level of selflessness and dependability it's true do not be a self-centered person what is in it for me we do this um, sadly i loved my precious nation nigeria but we need to change our values and our ideology every time we see a politician or a head of parliament or some wealthy person the first thing is what is in it for me wow this is his car sean sir good afternoon sir sir i'm, I'm great you know why can't you think and say what can i do how can i improve this man's life sir it looks like can i wash your car for how much no 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 nothing just to honor you as a seed it is powerful when you find selfless people who love you and love what you are doing just like that can i tell you i found a few of these people in my life and in this ministry and my goodness it is priceless to watch selflessness in action you see everything done with passion and the goal 
is never for self. Change your mindset. Some of you have been hated by many people today. Battles that are needless. I can't be friends with this man. He's not a millionaire. What will I get? Nothing. Go. What of you? I hear your dad is a senator. Uh, can we be friends? Oh, he didn't win the election. Oh, really? Okay, you'll hear from me. And that's it. <laughs> Nobody wants to commit himself to a life over something that will not last because of selflessness there are politicians here and there are many who are listening you see people dance around them during election get their money the moment they lose that election not even a call to say may the lord encourage you mm -mm. they delete the number immediately and they go to the opposing person well done sir i didn't tell you i've really been for you it's not just that i didn't I made up my mind that as far as it depends on me I will serve the Lord with all my heart can I tell you sincerely my beloved people I have never served you and served Jesus so that I can get something for my pocket or get a name I stand by the God who called me I'm telling you this when I serve you I serve you as a privilege from the depth of my heart it is an honor that God gave me if I die today, you will try to raise me back. <laughs> if I don't wake up, you will go and throw me in the grave. And that's the end of it. And the work of the Lord continues. It is a privilege to be able to serve. Most men of God will not be able to say this because they think if you say it, people will look down on you. It's the truth. You can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. As for me, I will serve with all my heart. I will serve His majesty and I will serve as many as He has brought under my care. But let me challenge you. Be a selfless person. There are some of you who, because of this attitude of not contributing, you can stand with a friend. You are discussing kingdom. You can buy bonds for almost 200 naira. Eat in the presence of the person. Finish it, squeeze the leather, drop it, and you are still talking. What sort of a life is that? We have to change. There are some of us who will buy food in front of children. They are running around us. You will eat there and the children. That don't disturb me. And finish it there and leave the children. When I saw the video of our, our the visitation to the IDP camps, I saw the hunger ravaged faces of some of those children. I was almost in tears. I said, every one of these kids have a destiny in Christ. And just because you are not in their position, however you are able to reach them, let these people see the love of jesus i was even told i think i hope i'm right on that that there was one who had had malaria to a point that it deteriorated the person he was in coma in the camp there it was when the doctors when they saw the person they rushed i don't i hope the person survived can i tell you life is beautiful when you are a giver life is beautiful when you can give there is a law that when you give it comes to you but focus on the giving it is more blessed to give not just money there are many of us who are like that a program is organized one naira from it does not come from you someone is doing something in your city and your area you are never part of anything that does not directly benefit you if your name will be written on it and some kind of honor will be given then i can do it but once i'm going to be silent no i want a name through it It is my prayer for everyone here that every relationship that you have now in your life and every association, you become an intentional contributor. If you are a man of God, you have friends, don't sit down and say, people are forgetting my birthday, forgetting my anniversary, forgetting... No! Become a contributor to that relationship. Hello, how are you? I notice it's like I've been sensing in my heart that you're not happy. Is there anything I can pray for you for? Eh, no, 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 no. Please talk to me. You can trust me. I can pray. And the person says, thank God, I found someone. Do you know what it means to be a shoulder for someone to lean on? It's more than being gifted. Being gifted is wonderful, but it can be limited. 
you've heard me say it, that my greatest desire aside being a minister of the gospel is that by the grace and the mercy of god that i can be a shoulder for someone to lean on it's true we don't have all this life that if someone is crying let my hands at least be able if i cannot do anything let me help to wipe the tears if i cannot pray with you and i cry with you together and i say lord show mercy to this person it's a contribution let me challenge you do not allow this week from today till next sunday happen without you doing something active and quality in the life of someone especially someone undeserving Are we blessed let me give you the final one and we're done for tonight so six be an active contributor to the growth of that relationship it is also the reason why we're having the workers appreciation dinner an opportunity i'm the one hosting it to tell the people thank you thank you it's one thing to be called by god i can tell you one truth that god has blessed me and bless this ministry with such passionate workers people who love jesus sincerely you know that they are not just doing it for apostle number seven the seventh key as far as maintaining relationships that eventually culminate to your being blessed is that you practice genuine love write it down this is the last practice genuine love three scriptures very quickly proverbs 10 12 proverbs 10 12 hatred stirred up strife but love covered all sins hatred stirred up strifes but love covered all sins john 13 35 very instructive scripture john 13 35 by this this singular sign this singular attribute shall all men know that ye are my disciples not when you are an anointed apostle not when you have a great ministry not when you pray in tongues by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if ye have love not for me one to another your love life is the clearest biblical index to measure your maturity more than tongues more than rema more than greek and hebrew words more than the theatrics of of ministry love first john chapter 4 first john chapter 4 from verse um let's see 26 first john 4 let's start from is there 20 first john 4 if a man say i love god and hated his brother he is a liar for he that loveth not his brother whom he had seen how can he love god whom he had not seen are you seeing that now that if you say you love god and you hate men there is something questionable about your love your love for god is tested in and through your love for men can i tell you this loving the undeservable is true love when you love people who do not deserve to be loved that is true love one of the secrets that i learned about working in the anointing is that if you want to see the power of god manifest in such marvelous dimensions in your life then you must be one who works in genuine love not selective love genuine love it must become your default disposition and i have by the grace of god kept this truth and i have seen it work in my life there are pastors who hate their members 
you cannot bless a people you hate the power of god cannot flow through you to bless the people god sees my heart and god knows that i love everyone who is part of this vision that i love you sincerely not because of anything tea and no no my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands my beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands yes you medical doctors are here they will tell you that living in anger bitterness jealousy all these things i have mentioned they don't just have spiritual side effects they have medical side effects you can literally dry up your bones there are many sicknesses today that were not originally caused by demons demons only found a door and cashed in on it to bring many people down to their knees and sadly many to the grave and lot went with him association demands that you rid yourself of jealousy association demands forbearance forgiveness association demands that you become an active contributor show me any man or any woman by god who works in keeping with these principles and remains alone show me any man or woman by god who works in keeping with these principles who will remain small and mediocre no it is a key to an excelling life it is a key to an excelling destiny many people by this message tonight god intends for you to be healed to show you first and foremost that you're ignoring the power of associations and relationship is costing you more than you would ever know and then number two to make up your mind determined by the power and the grace of god that from tonight until forever i am going to insist on quality relationships by practicing these principles go back home go online and listen to this message again and again don't assume you have gotten everything listen to it as many times as your spirit would require until it becomes spirit and life and then obtain grace from god to immediately become a practitioner of these truths and you will watch your life with astonishing wonder move from one dimension of grace to the other first your life will become a true expression of the life and the character of the christ in experience and then number two you will find out that you become an attractive force drawing all kinds of men all kinds of helpers all kinds of individuals who come into your life ready to hold your hands ready to defend you ready to stand by you ready to lift you that no matter what the problem has been as far as background and the rest is concerned god is giving you a key tonight that can help you are you ready to pray